Hi everyone, thanks for having coffee with me again. So hey, have you all been watching the news lately? Of course we have. We've all been glued to the TV set every day trying to get updates on what's going on with this virus, how long are we gonna be locked down, uh, what's the next cure, hope, uh, all these different things that are going on. And so if you've noticed though, you'll hear one channel say this and another channel say something just the opposite. You hear so many different opinions of what's right, what's wrong, I'm not here to talk about who's right and who's wrong today, but I do want you to realize this, that there is a term out there called fake news, and it is real. There's definitely a lot of fake news out there, right? And so I wanted to address you today about a, a source that we can go to that's not fake news. But first I want you to understand that Timothy outlined, or described, I should say, the situation we're in. For 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, he says this, but evil men and impostors will grow worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But you must continue in the things which you have learned and been assured of, knowing from whom you have learned them. So Timothy was pointing out to us that in the last days, there's going to be a lot of impostors, people deceiving on purpose, telling lies, all the above. But he says what you need to do is make sure that you're assured of what you've been taught. The truth that you know is truth really is the truth, right? And so I'm reminded of a time when Jesus was talking with Pilate and in John chapter 18, I want, to, I want to point something out there to you. Verse 37, Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? Jesus answered, you say rightly that I am a king. For this cause I was born and for this cause I've come into the world that I should bear witness to the truth. Everyone of the, is of the truth, hears my voice. And then Pilate asked a really interesting question. He says, what is truth? And I think sometimes that's what we have to ask ourselves today. And all this different information that we're getting, what's the truth? What's the real truth here? Because it's hard to discern when all we're getting is what we see coming through the TV set or online and the Internet. And so um, I want to go back to uh, getting us to focus on what is truth, what is real truth. And of course, we know that the Bible tells us that the word is truth. 2 Timothy 3.15 says this, and that from childhood you have known the Holy Scriptures, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith which is in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So in the middle of all of us making decisions and trying to figure out what we're supposed to do, to protect our families, to, to uh, bring in finances, to get another job, whatever it is you're faced with, the Bible is clear on it that we can go to the Word of God to get the instructions we need to be thoroughly equipped. Let's go on, Psalms 119, 104. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So the psalmist there is saying that, that his precepts, God's precepts, is where he gets his understanding. And when, he, when that happens, he realizes, I hate, I hate every false way. I hate the lies that I see out there. And then he goes on to say, the word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. When I read that scripture, I think of the, the lamp to my feet. It, it, it shows me where I'm at right now. But then it becomes a light to my path and it tells me where I need to go. See, so, so the Word of God will highlight where are you at right now, and then it tells you where you need to go to get where uh, success in life, what God wants for you, everything. Psalms 119, 130, the entrance of your words gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. So God's Word, when it gets on the inside of you, it brings truth to you, and it brings light. It lights up the truth. It lights up so you can see clearly the decisions that you need to make in life. Another scripture, John 8, 31. Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. 
So it's the word of God that sets us free. If we're under bondage because of this situation or any situation you're dealing with, if you're in bondage to that, then it's the word that's going to set you free. It's the word that's going to bring you peace in the middle of the storm, okay? And John chapter 1 tells us that um, Jesus and the word are one and the same. That's why Jesus said, I am the truth. John 14, verse 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. So John chapter 1 says the word is Jesus, and Jesus says, I am the truth. And of course, we read the scriptures that talks about the word being truth. Okay, so let's look at another one. Another point I want to bring out is God is the caretaker and the preserver of truth. He's the one that preserves truth. Truth isn't going to go away. Truth's not going to go by the wayside and, and become obsolete because God is the one preserving it. I want you to see that in Psalms 146, verse 5. It says, Happy is he who has the God of Jacob for his help, whose hope is in the Lord his God, who made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that is in them. And the last part says, Who keeps truth forever. God is the caretaker and preserver of truth. Truth will always be there for you if you want to seek it out. And when Jesus said, of course, he said, if you see the truth and know the truth, it'll make you free. Here's another one, another point I want to bring out about the truth. God's truth, his word, supersedes man's opinion. It supersedes man's opinion. Romans 3, verse 3. For what if some did not believe? Were their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? Certainly not. Indeed, let God be true and every man a liar. As it is written, that you may be justified in your words and may overcome when you are judged. So the word says, let every man be a liar and God be true. See, so God's truth supersedes man's opinion. Here's another point I want to bring out. The Holy Spirit is our instructor of truth. The Holy Spirit is our instructor to truth. John 14, verse 15. If you love me, keep my commandments, and I will pray the Father, and he will give you another helper, that he may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. So the Holy Spirit is called the Spirit of truth. The Spirit of truth. So when we're seeking truth, if we have the Holy Spirit on the inside of us, He's our instructor to show us that truth and help us to understand it. John 14, 26. But the Helper, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, he will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I said to you. Peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. So here Jesus is saying that the Holy Spirit has come to give us and teach us in, and uh, the, to know the truth. And he says, after all of that, he says, let your heart not be tro troubled, neither let it be afraid. Because when you know the truth, the, the truth of God's word, it will set you free. It'll bring you a place where you know and understand how much God loves you, how much he's got your back, how he's going to take care of you. And Jesus says that, that your heart won't be troubled anymore. It'll, it won't be afraid anymore because the peace of God will become an anchor to your soul. So I really want to encourage you today to allow the Holy Spirit to reveal the truths of God's word. Allow the word to instruct you in all that you're doing. And of course, you know what that means? That means you have to get into the book and read it. You have to understand the word of God and the Holy Spirit will bring that understanding to you. So I hope this is a help to you today. Yes, there's a lot of fake news out there, but you can know the truth in all of that. God can direct your path through the Holy Spirit. Allow the Holy Spirit to minister the truth to you. Get into the Word of God. You'll find out how much God really loves you. So I hope this is an encouragement to you. Again, I'll see you on the next video. God bless. You must be